Welcome to finding a required sample size when E, S, and C, L are known. Now this is lecture 12 in module 4, which uh, should just about finish up the confidence interval. It's been a long, hard journey, but the old dog is proud of you. Do you recall the formula for effect size? This uh, formula can be solved for N when E is known and S is known and the confidence level is known. For example, E equals Z times S divided by the square root of N. Now, I didn't go through all the algebraic manipulation of this for you, but this formula algebraically translates to N is equal to Z times S divided by the effect size and all of that squared. And you always round N up to the next whole number. You are likely to come out with a decimal and it's like saying somebody's got 4.3 kids. No, you either have three kids or four kids or five kids. And when you come up with your value, you want to make sure that you round up to the next whole number. Never round down. Now, give this formula a little bit of thought just a minute. If we have a desired confidence level, and we know a standard deviation of a sample, and we want to have an effect size fall in a specific range, then what this does is allow us to predict the number of values that we must have the sample in the sample. Now, hang on. I'm going to show you how to work one of these. The problem goes something like this. N is equal to Z times S divided by E and all of that quantity squared. Now in the problem 8 that I posted out there for you, N is equal to 1.96 times 0.4, all of that divided by 0.1 quantity squared. First thing we would do is multiply 1.96 times 0.4 which gives us 0 0.784 divided by 0 0.1 squared. When we divide that amount, we come up with 7.84 squared, which gives us 61.47. Now, keep in mind that you cannot have 61.47 respondents. You've either got to round it down or round it up, and you never round it down because if you round it down, you don't have enough. You have to have at least 61.47 for your effect size to be 0 0.1. So you would round that up and you would say n equals 62. In this problem, a sample size of 62 is sufficient to produce the desired effect size. 